Hello everyone, I'm Black Marvin, a progressive psychedelic trance artist, I'm a professional sound designer, and I'm also a teacher for electronic music production. <sighs> and today I want to talk about a compressor that played a major role uh, in my learning about compression. Um, this is a special one. The reason why it played a major role in my understanding is that it's just so out there, it's just so, you cannot not hear it. And sometimes, you know, with compression, you're like, am I doing something? Am I doing something right? Am I doing something wrong? Well, with this one, I'm going to give some examples about how it behaves on the sound. And hopefully it will help you understand compression like it did for me. Before we dive in, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel. I got more tips about mixing, mastering, sound design. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. I, I don't do life hacks or, you know, crypto or whatever. It's just like sound design, mastering, and how to become a better producer. So let's just dive in right now. So this is Rough Rider by Audio Damage. And boy, it is rough. I've used this one in the past. I don't use it that much lately, but after this video, I might fall in love again with this compressor. But this one played a very specific role in my learning journey. It really helped me understand compression on a deeper level. And the reason why is because this compressor is so obvious and rough that you cannot not hear it. You, you have no choice to hear what it does. And really that helped me understand compression. First, I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, you want to learn more about compression, maybe understand it better. So I'm going to give you a little tour of the plugin. First, we have the ratio here. So if this is sensitivity, so the threshold here is called sensitivity, then that could also be called intensity for the ratio. Because that, that's really uh, how intense the compressor will work. The closer we are to one, the closer we are to the compressor not doing anything. And the closer we are to 1000, the closer we are to an actual limiter, an actual ceiling. Now, before I give you a demonstration of the ratio, I have two loops here um, that I'm going to work with today. So uh, first, I want you to hear them dry. And after that, we're going to start fiddling with the compressor. The first one is a Jambi loop from a Fractal Sound Pack, and it sounds like this. It's a, a very simple uh, yet effective jambe loop. And I chose this one because there's some percussive element in it and that's gonna be very noticeable uh, with the compressor on. And the second one is a loop again from Fractal Sounds, but this one is from the sludge pack. So it's a like kind of a sludgy grid and loop, but this one also has a, it has both like a sus some sustained elements and also a very spiky uh, moment. So that's going to be, again, good for demonstrating the compressor. So first, I'm going to demonstrate the ratio. With Edison here, we're going to have a real-time view of what's happening. So the sensitivity uh, slash threshold is pretty active right now. It's at minus 54, so we should hear a lot. So remember, first it won't be much active and then all the way through 1000 is going to get more and more active. So since this one is almost a ceiling, you can hear that it's, it's at the end is just squashed really is just like almost nuked so this is quite an extreme setting but if you're learning uh and you're also like testing new gear testing new saturations compressor anything it's really good to go all the way uh, to its maximum setting sort of then it's easier to understand and apply it on a mild uh, basis so that was the ratio. I'm going to keep it at uh, 10 to 1, I think, for the rest of our adventure here. So I want to talk about the attack and release. That's kind of the like murkiest part uh, that people have a harder time to grasp when they're learning compression. Because attack and release, it's easier to understand when we're talking about an envelope, like a 
volume ADSR stuff. But in terms of compression, that's uh, slightly harder to grasp. But trust me, with this one, it's going to be quite obvious. So the attack is really how fast all this compression machine hacks. You can see it as a mouse trap and the audio being the mouse. And the attack is how fast the mouse trap is going to snap the mouse. And release is really how fast it's going to come back to its original position. Um, for some weird reason, my brain really works in uh, pictures rather than logic. Although, well, it seems like logic first needs to go through pictures and then becomes logic. But honestly, that just that, that picture and that analogy really helped me understand compression. So now um, I'm going to kill the transients really with the attack. So let's start by killing the transient. I'm so going to fiddle with the attack uh, so you can really understand what it does. Let's do this. So I brought back a bit of, uh, you know, the threshold was quite low, so it was really intense. So I brought it back to a somewhat normal level. Now let's start playing with the attack. So you can see here that it really killed the transients of the sound. And in the end, you know, the goal of a compressor is to manage dynamics and that's that's what it's doing. Um, they don't all have an attack so bold and so obvious uh, and so fast. That's why there's just a bunch of different compressors on the market. But this one can help you uh, manage the dynamics in some ways. If you want to tame the attack, I guess. The true use, or I'd say the best use of compressor, kind of resides in you know all these settings being balanced. But again, what I like about this one is that you cannot, you cannot not hear what it does to the attack, you know, to the transients of the sound. So that's quite obvious. There's also one other thing I want to put your attention to, and it's the fact that the gain drastically uh, drops. Um, and that's that's normal. That's uh, the compression happening uh, and the way we ask it to compress. That's why you have a makeup gain at the end. It's to compensate for everything that's been eaten and taken out by the compressor. I'm going to compensate the gain for this extreme attack setting. So now it is sort of gain compensated. Now it, 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 the transients are, are like rounded off, but it, Gives us some kind of whip on the sound. That's that's nice. Now let's uh, talk about the release a bit. So the release is a bit um, more subtle than the attack to grasp, but since this one is quite obvious, you will hear it. Um, first, 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 just know that in a lot of compressors, when you put the release to a very, very, very close and uh, fast level, it will uh, create some distortion. I think that in this one it does. So in this one, it does not just by uh, closing it all the way, but you can hear now with these uh, settings all the way too fast, it's sort of uh, fizzled. There's it's just it's just too fast and too much for the compressor. But I recall some compressor just you know when the release is is too close, it can also create that kind of effects. So if you experience this in a compressor, just chill out a bit. But really with the release, that's how you can kind of get that uh, pumping feeling uh, or at least enhance it. So like I said, with the mousetrap thing, so, you know, the trap activates, so the compressor compress. But with a very slow release, it will take a lot of time uh, before the release goes back or the compressor goes back to its normal state. And in this time, if it takes a lot of time, it will probably still compress and still reduce some gain. While if you 
have a fast release, it will sort of punch in, punch out. So let's uh, demonstrate this. I'm going to put a bit of higher ratio and possibly a bit of more sensitivity for this. So you can hear that uh, with a short release, we have all like the body of the djembe, you know, the body of the percussion that there's the, like there's a snap, the transient, and then there's the body. We really hear like the, the body for a long time while with the very slow release, like I said, it takes a lot of time to go back to its normal state. So it's still compressed for a longer time than in this case. So more towards the end, we have just like almost like spikes of the djembe in and out. So it really chokes up the sound in some ways so sensitivity i won't put too much time on it because you know it's just like the the more sensitivity there is the more um compression there is and it's easier to activate the mouse trap i was talking about but to give you a good visual that's really uh that's really something like this that's the sensitivity that's the, the threshold so the more sensitivity the super easier it's gonna get to uh, get activated and start to compress. Before we end up, I just want to demonstrate something on this second loop, which has some kind of pumping effect, like already inside the loop. But with this compressor, with these settings, we're sort of canceling that pumping effect and we're making things leveled out. And sometimes that's what you want to do. You want to level things out um, because again, Compression is dynamic management. So these are the settings I used. Quite a fast attack and a longer release with uh, that threshold and a bit of uh, makeup gain. Well, more than a bit, actually. 20 dB of makeup gain. And you can listen to the, the way the original loop bounces and then how we level things out with the compressor. So I don't know if you heard, but we kind of canceled that bouncy effect. So that's the kind of thing you, know, you can do with uh, compression. You can induce some bouncing effect or you can uh, remove them. That's all dynamics management uh, in the end. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. One great thing also about this compressor is that it's free. So thank you, Audio Damage, for this uh, amazing beast of a compressor. As always, if you need some help with learning electronic music production, I have a community of students and you can always write to me on Instagram and we can discuss how we can make you a better producer. And I will see you in another video. Happy producing.